Now let us know more about the concept of organizational change. Change is not necessarily related to the past. It is also not predictive of the future. It is discontinuous, demanding, among others, a flexibility of response. There appears to be no single predictable plan approach to managing change which can work. The past is no more a prologue to the future. Indeed, there may be very limited cyclical trends or linear progressions. Defining change, manage change and organizational change. Change refers to something which occurs to an organization, a group or an individual. Managed change relates to the active involvement of the organization, group or individual in making things occur with a view to accomplish the best interests of both the individual and the organization. Change means managed change which can be used to solve problems more readily, learn from experiences, adapt to new conditions and become more competent. Meet David. David's the CEO of a big company. David's company is growing fast, very fast. And to maintain a competitive edge in an era of hyper competition, David plans to introduce a change in the way he's doing business. Any good leader knows that the only thing that's constant is change. Changes both within and outside the organization. Mergers acquisitions, adopting new practices, upgrading technology. All of these are inevitable. David's decided to implement ERP to manage critical functions like sales, finance, and human resources. But how are these changes going to affect the average employee? Someone like Sam, for instance. Meet Sam. Sam's an accountant. He's great with numbers. What he's not so great at is handling unpredictability. He's worried about how he will manage with the ERP system. Will he be trained properly and on time? Will the new system be launched at one go? Will the timeline of these changes be communicated to him? Sam's too anxious to focus on work. He misses deadlines. His customers are unhappy. He's so apprehensive and stressed that he quits. Now imagine the same situation with every employee of the organization. Not just Sam from accounts, but Bobby from sales and Anne from HR too. That's a lot of uncertain people stressing out about the ERP with no clear communication, worrying about changes that could have been handled better. Morale drops, attrition increases, deadlines are missed, quality falls, customers are complaining, the company suffers. Now you know why David's nervous. But what if there was another way? What if you could pick up the phone and call the specialist in managing organization change? Leading industry experts with the experience and the know-how to help ease your organization through difficult periods of transition. That's where we come in. We specialize in organizational change management. We can help assess exactly how to deal with any change in your organization, identify potential change barriers, and create a change roadmap. A change management strategy. A strategy that will ensure everyone affected by these changes are sufficiently engaged and their buy-in ensured. We'll manage key stakeholders at each step of the change journey. Focus on people capability through training sessions and ensure people alignment with the organization design. And what are the benefits? Organizational change refers to a relatively enduring alteration of the present state of an organization or its components or interrelationships amongst the components and their differential integrated functions in totality or partially in order to attain greater viability in the context of the present and anticipated future environment. It may embrace activities such as amalgamation and bifurcation, diversification, reorganization, restructuring, 
change in design or the introduction of new system involving the total organization or its section. It also includes change of people, tasks and technology as well as change in processes, customs, norms and culture of the organization. Management of organizational change may encompass anticipation of needs for change decision about the required changes and initiation and implementation of change ensuring that they are stable and lasting in nature. Defining variants of change Spermer, Home, Hunt and Osborne 4 outlined the following other variants of change. Radical frame breaking change versus incremental frame bending change. Unplanned and planned change. Unplanned change is the one which takes place at random or spontaneous and without the direction of any change agent. That is an individual or a group responsible for changing the existing pattern of behavior of people or social systems. The plan change is the one which occurs as a consequence of specific efforts on the part of a change agent. It may be a direct response to perception of a performance gap that is a discrepancy between actual and a design state of affairs. Defining approaches to manage change There are basically three approaches to manage change which must be defined for properly understanding the concepts of organizational change and development. These include intervention theory and method. According to Argurus, the founder of the intervention theory and method, Intervention is to enter into an ongoing system of relationship to come between or among persons, groups or objects for the purpose of helping them. There are three types of intervention activities that are made use of to accomplish these tasks of intervention theory. A time-tested approach which has known and predictable result, example an already validated questionnaire, an established team building approach or a group. Existing knowledge adapting in a new way to fit the needs of the client system and development of a new intervention by pooling the resources of the interventionist and the client system. Plan change the modern era is characterized by the rise of the rational spirit, the conviction that science can assist in the betterment of living system. These indicate the role of the emerging fields of HR and OB in achieving improvements of human organization. The process of plan change incorporates change agent, a client system and the collaborative attempt to employ Properly knowledge to clients' problems. Plan change differs from operation research, another kind of change, effort in the following ways. Plan change differs with a vis, the identification of strategic variable, that is those variables which cause difference in performance of the system. It is related to problems of identification of objective and values, collaboration and conflict, control and leadership. Plan change differs from operations research vis-a-vis -vis the perceived importance of the relationship with the client, while plan change involves the quality and nature of the relationship as indicators for the measure of progress and as valid sources of data and diagnosis, operation research, although involving sensitivity toward the client, is less concerned with human interactions. While operation research largely relates to research and problem solving plan change concentrates on implementation through counseling, training, management, development schemes. Plan change takes less account of the idea of the system in its approaches than operation research. Need for change The need for bringing about a plan change arises due to several reasons such as major changes in the external environment, technology, nature of workforce, etc. may make an organization existing structure, management practice or its culture obsolete for the new situation. With the growth of the organization, its communication and decision-making systems may become choked, its reward and punishment system may lose their effectiveness and its interpersonal and interdepartmental relationship may deteriorate. 
stages in the growth of an organization. The significant stages behind the growth of an organization include creativity, direction, delegation, coordination, collaboration. Strategy of planned change. The components of strategy for planned change include the dimension of change. An organization can usefully be viewed as a multivariate system consisting of four interacting variables tax, structure, technology, and people. According to this concept, organizational change programs can be directed towards three dimensions only, which are structure. Structural change aims at modifying the roles and expectation of workers by redefining man-man relationship in the organization. Technology. The technological change aims at improving the efficiency of machines and workers by changing man-job, job-job and man-man relationship. Behavioral change. The behavioral change attempts to change man himself by training and developing him. A man can be changed at three levels, knowledge, behavior and attitude. The domino effect. When introducing change in any one dimension, it should not be forgotten that it will be touch of a sequence of related and supporting changes. This is known as the domino effect. The process of change. Now let us understand the actual process of change that must be followed in a sequential order to get the most out of the change. Kurt Levin has identified three stages in this process. Unfreezing. The aim of unfreezing is to motivate and make the individual or group ready to change. It is a thawing out process where the forces acting on an individual are so rearranged that he sees the need for rejecting old behavioral patterns and adopting new ones. In brief, unfreezing is the breaking down of the moorings, customs and tradition of an individual, the old ways of doing things so that he is ready to accept new alternatives. Changing Once the individual has discovered the anomaly between his existing behavior pattern and the new pattern, he enters into the metamorphosis stage. He is now ready to be provided with new patterns of behavior. The process is most likely to occur by one of two mechanisms, identification and internalization. Refreezing Refreezing is the permanent rooting of the newly acquired behavior into the individual's personality so that it does not get extinguished over time. If the new behavior has been internalized while being learned, this has automatically facilitated refreezing because it has been fitted naturally into individual's personality. Resistant to change. Out of the three stages of the process of change, the unfreezing stage is perhaps the most difficult because it is in this stage that a manager has to face maximum resistance from his employees. The reason for this resistance are as follows. People resist changes which are against their habits, experiences, perceptions, customs, beliefs and values. Thus, a man accustomed after lunch of his chair, pipe and newspaper may resist any change in the details of his routine. People resist change which they think will alter their established human relationships in the organization. This is the social aspect of a change. Stress management. Stress management is an important skill that all adults need in order to improve themselves as problem solvers and to be more in control of their lives. According to St. Louis psychologist and counseling information and referral, the process of stress management is one of the keys to a happy and successful life in modern society. Although life provides numerous demands that can provide difficult to handle, stress management is the best way to manage anxiety and maintain overall well-being. More information is provided below on how to measure stress levels, learn about stress management models and practice techniques that will help to reduce stress and promote a positive lifestyle. Nature of Stress there is a typical nature of stress that can be identified with certain specific characteristics. 
you know there are 10 key stress indicators that have been identified. These indicators include sleep difficulties, loss of appetite, poor concentration or poor memory retention, performance dip, uncharacteristic errors or missed deadlines, anger or tantrums, violent or antisocial behavior, emotional outbursts, alcohol or drug abuse, nervous habits sources of stress there are several factors responsible for stress it is caused by various factors not all of which are work related these sources behind stress are known as stressors the stresses can be broadly categorized in two categories external stressor and internal stressor external stressor Physical conditions such as heat or cold, stressful psychological environments such as working conditions and abusive relationship, example bullying. Internal stressors, physical ailments such as infection or inflammation or physiological problems such as worrying about something. Causes of stress at work. Stress at work can be caused by a number of factors. These factors could be any of the following. Bullying or harassment by anyone, not necessarily a person's manager, feeling powerless and uninvolved in determining one's own responsibilities, continuous unreasonable performance demands, lack of effective communication and conflict resolution, lack of job security, long working hours, excessive time away from home and family, office politics and conflict among staff, a feeling that one's reward is not compensate with one's responsibility. Working hours, responsibilities and pressures disrupting life balance, diet, exercise, sleep and rest, play family time etc. Stress effects. Stress significantly reduces brain functions such as memory, concentration and learning all of which are central to effective performance at work. Certain tests have shown up to 50% loss of performance in cognitive tests performed by stress sufferers. Stress is said by some to be a good thing for themselves or others that it promotes excitement and positive feelings. Causes of stress. In general, the causes of stress can be categorized into internal and external factors. Environment, we all have highly individual responses to the world around us. One person may feel equally comfortable in a small town and a big city, whereas another person may be overwhelmed by a city's noise, intense space and crowded streets. Events from taking Final exams to introducing your significant other to your family, many situations can lead to stress. Some examples of stressful events include personal or family illness, increased workload, roommate conflicts and more. Multiple events often combine and can leave you feeling weighed down. Expectation. Many of us demand a lot from ourselves and from others. Example of expectation related stress include receiving lower grades than expected and not getting certain internship or jobs. Stress has a close link with perfectionism. Sources of stress. Identifying sources of stress at work can be very helpful. No one wants to feel bad at work all the time. However, if we do not learn to handle the stress we experience at work, we are headed for a burnt out. Once we know what is making we feel stress, then we can take steps to relieve the stress or make a change in the way we react to the stressor. There are two main types of stress. Acute stress also known as the fight or flight response, acute stress is our body's immediate reaction to a significant threat, challenge or scare. Chronic stress. This persistent stress can lead to health problems such as had agate, such as repeat, such as had ages and insomnia. The chronic Stress response is much more subtle than is the acute stress response, but the effects may be longer lasting and more problematic. Consequences of stress Consequences are as simple as the after effects of any particular event or happening. 
Like any other organizational problem, stress also has some obvious after effects that may put a short term or long term impact on the employee as well as the organization. Stressors are real or perceived challenges to an organism ability to meet its real or perceived needs. Types of consequences of stress. Lower immunity to diseases. Stress uses a lot of energy that is vital to keep our body defenses high against diseases. When the energy is used up for stress, the body becomes only partially equipped to deal with outside illnesses as well as diseases such as cancer, weight loss or weight gain. Consequences of stress In the majority of cases, stress causes weight gain but some people experience weight loss. It all depends on how we react to stressful situation. Even if we do not overeat when we become stressed, we will still gain weight because the energy that should be used to digest our food is now used to cope with stress. Decrease ability to heal. When the body suffers from a lot of stress or is in a chronic stress, the secondary functions of the body such as the heal itself is temporarily shut. This prevents quick healing and other body weak, poorer functioning of internal organs. Kidneys, heart, lungs and other organs get much less energy when we get stressed. This causes them to function in a poorer way which can then cause illnesses, indigestion, headaches and other negative consequences. Living in survival mode Constant stress makes one focus on how to survive rather than how to thrive. When we live in a survival mode, we will always have less money, less health and less of everything that should come naturally. This is because we abandon any creative thoughts and simply react to what's happening in the outside world. Increased change of miscarriage in case of pregnancy, stress is encountered often. The energy that should be used for the healthy development of the child is instead used to react to the thing that caused stress. In severe cases, stress can even lead to miscarriage or illnesses, weak immune system in the child, inability to sleep. Stress causes people to always be on the alert for real or potential danger. This is likely to affect sleep and resultantly it may not be deep enough. Heart problems. In case of stress, the adrenaline release for the fight or flight response makes the human heart beat faster than usual. When this happens, often the heart is forced to overwork and this can cause many different heart problems and illnesses. Muscle pains. When someone is stressed, the energy that should be used to carry blood into certain parts of the muscle is used up to react to the real or potential danger. Because of this, certain muscles do not get enough blood and this causes tension and muscle pains. Distress and stress management tips. In today's highly complex business environment, it is of utmost importance to be aware of the most beneficial and sustainable stress management tips to balance personal and professional life well. Actions necessary to reduce our negative stress consequences are These tips include Have more fun Eat for great health Increase physical activity Accentuate positive thoughts Be grateful for the good in your life Get plenty of rest relaxation and sleep, reach out, get support and interact socially, use biofeedback or other relaxation techniques, make more time for personal interests and hobbies. Consequences of unmanaged stress Stressful working condition have a direct negative impact on the mental and physical well-being of the workforce. A disgruntled workforce obviously underperforms and underdelivers, leading to an impact on the bottom line. Summary Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in the lecture. Stress management is an important skill that all adults need in order to improve themselves as problem solvers and to be more in control of their lives. Stress is caused by various factors not all of which are work-related, of course. Sources of stress Known as stressor, 
are in two categories external stressor and internal stressor stress has to be managed with a rational calm control and socially sensitive approach appropriate changes are made to alter the situation or the environment and thereby reduce or eliminate stress by resolution of the problem creating the stress